flashing process is the same as what we did for the previous custom ROM. You can watch the last video and follow the process as per the instructions. I have already flashed the ROM and it boots with nice boot animation. Then comes this simple setup which is the last step before you can actually experience the ROM. After setup you will jump into the ROM itself. Now assuming you are coming from the MIUI stable version, the first thing you will notice is the performance. It is definitely better as custom ROMs provide features and flexibility to the users which are not available in stock ROMs. You get the stock alpha launcher installed in the ROM along with a set of wallpapers. Now let's go to settings, about phone, we find the alpha droid logo at the top. This is android T based custom ROM. The android security update is 5 May 2023. Alpha droid version is 1.5.1, build date is 4 June. Kernel version is 4.14.274, alza 1.1, everything seems fine here. Installing a custom ROM on the phone could potentially improve performance. However, there are also custom ROMs that may have compatibility issues with certain devices. It depends on the specific ROM and the device itself. Some custom ROMs are optimized for better performance and may provide smoother and faster operation as compared to the stock ROM. Talking about the performance of this ROM on POCO X2, I feel like it is okay. Not great, definitely better than the stock ROM. Scrolling, texting, swiping and switching between applications all feel fine to me. I'll go into more detail about this later in this video. It has by default adaptive screen 120Hz refresh rate display. Its maximum is 120Hz and minimum is 60Hz. You get the option to force peak refresh rate by which all supported apps will run at 120Hz refresh rate but unsupported apps like the camera app will drop down to 60Hz. Now let's move on to the Geekbench 6 test. We will keep some apps running in the background to check RAM management. Geekbench tests your CPU or GPU graphics processor in various ways and converts it into a numerical score. First, we tested the CPU Geekbench performance of the device. We got a fine single core score of 715 and 1739 multi core score, which is better than previous custom ROM. 1066 GPU OpenCL score, which is again better than Evolution X, and 8494 GPU Vulkan, which is slightly lower than what we got on previous custom ROM. Performance mode is also available for some devices. It does not unlock any hidden potential of your phone to deliver out of the world performance. It uses your device power settings to provide maximum performance that drains the battery. Here we do not have the performance mode option in the settings as we got on the Nothing Phone 1. You can watch the video, its link is in the video description. RAM management is good even after a thorough Geekbench test, apps like YouTube, Gmail, Photos, Spotify and Chrome still ran in the background. It should come as no surprise that Chrome reloaded. I also tested the screen touch sampling rate which is the number of times the display registers your touch. For an average user, 120Hz is sufficient for daily usage. However, that much may not be enough for power users and gamers. The left side of the screen shows the input and the right side shows the output. Here we get an average score of 120Hz for both the segments, a decent score for average users. I also did a UI bench jitter test. User experience will be better if jitter value is less. We found a consistent jitter value on the ideal mode, but when you try to run apps in the background, the jitter value suddenly increases. However, with the ROM performing well, the result shouldn't really matter. Scrolling, swiping and in-app experience is fine, but having more consistent value is required to avoid workload events. All the basic functions like Wi-Fi, Hotspot, Bluetooth and Location are working properly. There are no Wi-Fi or network signal issues. Flashing the wrong or old build of custom ROM is a very common culprit behind this happening. This custom ROM supports stable 4G connection with Wi-Fi calling. There is also Force LTE carrier aggregation support. Carrier aggregation is a technique used to increase data speed in mobile networks. It involves using multiple carriers together to form a wider channel for data transmission. 
This results in reduced latency, allowing for more efficient and responsive mobile networks. Incoming and outgoing calls are working properly. It also has option to record calls. All recorded calls are saved in call log section. Wi-Fi hotspot is working fine, screen recording is available and working, Bluetooth is working with audio codecs like SBC and AAC for OnePlus Nord Buds. I will soon upload an in-depth review of this earbuds whether it is worth buying or not after one year of release. So stay tuned to the channel. Fingerprint sensor and face unlock is working. The device is encrypted. Encryption is the method by which information is converted into a secret code that hides the true meaning of the information. This is important for the data security. The device has passed all tests such as display, multi-touch, flashlight, loudspeaker, ear speaker, microphone, ear proximity, light sensor, accelerometer, vibration, volume up button and volume down button. The device information app is showing the device security level is L1 which means you can watch Netflix and Amazon Prime at full HD resolution. Safety net test passed on Yasnak safety net application which means you can use all banking or security applications without any problem. Sensors like accelerometer, light, proximity, magnetometer, compass and gyroscope are working properly and you will not have any problem in handling the device. Coming to the camera app, unlike the Evolution X, we get the stock camera app installed on the ROM. We have photo mode, video mode, portrait mode, macro mode, night mode and pro mode in working condition. Sadly, some features are not working which I will discuss at the end of this video. We get features like HDR mode, AI mode, customizable ratio, voice shutter, grid lines and tilt shift. You can change the picture quality by going to settings. It also has anti-banding feature which reduces the flicker effect caused by artificial lightning. It is recommended to set it to 50Hz in regions such as Europe and Asia and 60Hz in the US regions. Now let us discuss some of the features that come with this custom ROM. You find the alphabet customization settings in the settings app where you have a lot of options in terms of customization. First up we have the user interface settings. Here we have many options to customize the UI. In the ambient display settings we have the ambient customization option where you can set the ambient text. You can choose a color for it increase or decrease its size. We also have ambient image option through which you can set ambient image. It is recommended to use minimal wallpaper to avoid heavy battery consumption. It has charging animation option which displays an animation when the device is plugged in. Full screen apps to ignore notch space and screen off animation. In monet settings we have different themes such as expressive, rainbow, fruit salad and more brightness and chroma for bright and strong colors. In UI style settings, we have many styles like espresso, backleggers, nexodus, shishu styles and more which gives a nice look to the settings panel. We also have settings style option where we get styles like AOSP, DOT and NAD. Also we have customization options like navbar style, we have multiple font styles, icon packs, signal icon style, Wi-Fi icon style and icon shapes. Now some of these settings require a restart before they can be applied. In status bar settings, we have option to change clock style. We get option to set colored icons, show notification count and display custom logo. We can set the battery style. You also get battery bar settings where you can customize battery colors. You also have double tap to sleep gesture. In the quick settings, we have the option to change the brightness slider style, its position, it has various quick settings styles, we can set background transparency, we get a working header image feature, you can hide, increase or decrease the size of the label, vertical layout option is also available, you can set tiles animation, you can change tiles animation duration, portrait and landscape columns, it also has animation interpolator option. You can speed up the animation of the tiles. We have options like linear, bounce, 
anticipate and many more all features are working properly in the button section we have all the basic options like wake device answer call long press for flashlight and many more in lock screen settings we have many clock font styles double tap to sleep we can increase or decrease clock size we have different shortcuts to use on lock screen we also have a working media cover art feature unlike the nothing phone one in the notifications section we find all the basic functions some unique features like blink flashlight for incoming calls battery light and notification light are available room also activates the led notification light in the navigation section we have some customization options and actions which are working fine in the sound settings we have the adaptive playback option which after enabling automatically pauses the media when the volume is muted and will automatically resume when the volume is restored within the time limit we get realme ui and right style volume panel styles you can set the volume panel on the left side set the timeout for it and all the basic functions in miscellaneous settings we have game space unlock higher fps in games option which works for bgmi and should work for most games netflix poof parallel space swipe three fingers to take screenshot gesture pocket detection and weather settings these were some of the best features that we get with this custom rom also we have some additional features in the display settings like live display where you can calibrate the colors you get different color modes smooth display that increases battery usage tap to wake and sleep you have access to a few more gestures now let's talk about what is not working slow motion mode is not working in the stock camera app documents mode is also not working the gallery app that comes with this rom is messed up you need to flash g apps via recovery and install the google photos app other than that for the most part everything seems fine to me if you find something that i haven't mentioned then be sure to let me know in the comments section i have been using this rom for almost a week now and this rom is more inclined towards the features it provides its performance is average should you install this rom it depends on your choice if you are more interested in features then this rom is definitely for you but if you demand performance then you may be left unsatisfied i hope this video helped you thanks for watching Meet you in the next one. I gotta head out.